on the vault. High atop the pastoral center of the Diocese of Camden, you're listening to Talking Catholic. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talking Catholic. This is Marianela Nunez, and I am with my friend and colleague, Mike Bress. How are you, Mike? Good. How are you, Marianella? Good, good. You know, we're kind of like excited that um, Catholic Schools Week it's over, and uh, it was a tremendous success this year, thanks to the uh, creativity and generosity of time of our principals, advancement directors, and the entire Catholic school community of South Jersey. Yeah, absolutely. It was it was an incredible week, and as I've put into a couple of emails uh, and some phone calls, it's on to the next for us, because at the time of the recording, uh, it is now Lent, and we just had Ash Wednesday yesterday. Um, and so we're, we, we leave that and we hop right into something else that's important on our calendar. So it's an exciting time for, uh, for Catholic schools and, and for our Catholics in general. So it's an exciting, sure. uh, exciting time for sure. Have you, uh, if, if you're willing to, um, this is always a topic. Do you know what you're doing for Lent? If, if you're giving up something or adding something to get closer to, uh, to your faith, you know? I have mine, so I'm, I'll, I can start, but I'll, I'll I'll let you start first. I actually said this year that I wasn't going to do any like food related uh, sacrifices, but it was going to be more a um, kind of like uh, something for for my kids. Like you know, I'm going to try not to get us upset on the things that they do uh, and uh, fast from from that. So that would be um, my goal for this Lent, which started yesterday and i can tell you it is a sacrifice <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say does that mean we have to check with your kids that all's going well uh well, you, you with that sacrifice in easter you know like yeah how did it go how, how many times did she really like, get don't scream get don't scream don't yell <laughs> <laughs> how That's about great. you mike so I have a tendency, as probably a lot of marketing and social media folks, uh, to be on my phone quite a bit. And so I have taken it upon myself that when I get home at night um, and it is time for family time, that my phone uh, goes upstairs and sits on my dresser so that I cannot uh, be on my phone all the time and be on social media. I can check it from time to time and make sure nothing's, you know, blowing up there's not text messages or anything of that nature but i'm not doing the constant sort of scrolling and and ignoring everybody that that can happen from time to time especially at night when we're we're, we're calming down so it's an opportunity i look at it as an opportunity for more conversation chance to read more and you know uh the kind of break away from that digital the the digital trap that i put myself in sometimes so, and I'm also as an added thing, cause we like to, in our house, we like to put something that you're also trying to add. Uh, I've reinvested myself into trying to finish uh, the Bible in a year podcast, which I know Mike always enjoys when we bring up other podcasts, but uh, I got about three quarters of the way through uh, the first iteration and, and had some trouble towards the end. And so every morning you get in my car and that's the first thing I pop on. Uh, and so it's a way to kind of get in the right mindset and uh, listen to reflections on the Bible. And hopefully past Lent, I'll be able to, uh, even as as Easter comes, I'll be able to finish it up. So that's uh, that's my Lenten journey. <laughs> and so far, like you, so far it's going well. That's really cool. Well, you know, today, um, you know, we have a very special podcast going on. Like um, one of the things that I would say uh, because I always like to have these words in my mouth as a director of enrollment. It's like retention, uh, right, and recruitment. And uh, I have to say that we uh, in the diocese have a great principal retention. Like, you know, we uh, a lot of the folks that have been in our Catholic schools have been there for years and, uh, you know, are very committed professionals that, um, you know, give their life for the benefit of our Catholic school communities. And uh, today we are talking about uh, new principles and um, have three wonderful guests here with us that are going to share a little bit of their journey this year as new principals in our South Jersey Catholic School community and um, are going to talk to us about what it means to be um, a Catholic school principal uh, in our schools. 
And so for that, uh, we invited um, Elizabeth Mariani, uh, who is the principal at Sacred Heart School in Camden. Welcome, Elizabeth. How are you? Hello. I'm doing so well. Thank you. Thank you for being here. We also have uh, Ramona Brigada, who is our principal at Our Lady Start of the Sea School in Atlantic City. Welcome to the show, Ramona. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yes, we are happy you're here. And we also have, last but not least, uh, Sister Santa Borzillo, who is the principal at St. Teresa School in Runnymede. Welcome, Sister Santa. Thank you so much for this opportunity. We are glad, uh, you know, to have such an amazing group of principals here with us. And uh, why don't we start uh, by asking, you know, how has it been this year as, you know, you started uh, in your respective schools? And um, how how did you come in to Sacred Heart, Our Lady Short of the Sea and St. Teresa? So can we start with uh, Sister Santa? It's been a, an incredible journey so far this year for me. Uh, it's all new. It's exciting. It's learning new children's names, new personalities, new teachers. Um, it's been exciting and I'm enjoying it. That's fantastic. What about you, Elizabeth? It has been a fantastic transition into leadership. And I really do feel that there's a connection between the communities and um you know, between the different principles, the Catholic partnership, even the Father Doyle house, um, they really have truly made me feel welcomed. That's awesome. Um, and Ramona? So I'm having a great resurgence of my career, um, having retired from public education, taking a year off, and uh, then coming back. I think um, having that year off really allowed me to have some downtime and now um, being back in the schools, I'm so enjoying it, so enjoying the the students. Um, I really feel like I, it kind of came full circle. I started as a bilingual teacher in Camden and loved working with the Latino community in Camden. And now um, I'm back here at Our Lady Star of the Sea with a very similar um, population of students. And uh, I'm really loving being here and being in the classroom. It's been great so far. That's great. Now you you kind of like described Ramona what your kind of like previous experience was a little bit and how you ended up in uh, your Catholic school. I would like to hear from uh, you know the, the the two other guests. Like, how did you end up being a principal of your school? What was your journey, sister? You want to be first? You're laughing, so I pick you. <laughs> um, believe it or not, mine came with we need we have a favor. We're in need of a sister to go to a school. We have a vow of obedience. So that's how <laughs> I got to be the principal here. You don't say no when they ask for there's a need. And, and we go where we're sent. The Holy Spirit will guide uh, and the support. Exactly. And the support you're getting from the Office of Catholic Education. Oh, my God. I'm going to talk to you about Absolutely. that, sister, because apparently my wife said I have the same vow of obedience. And I just I didn't <laughs> see that in the in the in your vow. But I'm, I'm it seems it the same. Vow. Yeah, it is. It's a lifelong thing as well. It's surprising. Sure. No, that's it's a different it's a different tact. Right. I mean, this is for for our other guests. You know, there was more of an interview process, more of, you know, and, and right. yours is, this is, this is where we're called to be. Right. And, um, exactly. and, 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 and here you go, here's your new, here they here's go. your brand new school. <laughs> That's <amazing>. you go. <laughs> yep. What about you, Elizabeth? What was your journey? I really do think it all began with, uh, St. Joe's, uh, Alliance for Catholic Education program. Uh, which is a graduate program I did. Um, and really my focus within education has always been social justice. And um, leading through that process uh, led me through Gloucester Catholic and eventually Father Joyce at St. Joseph's um, realized that there was a need in Camden and thought about my you know social justice background and suggested it. And it was very serendipitous and it was an amazing journey with you know the application process and interviews, but it just seemed like to be a perfect fit. That's great. 
Ramona, mm -hmm. like, you know, you come uh, from uh, the public school world, uh, you know, being involved that way. What do you feel like, you know, are the challenges uh, that, you know, uh, Catholic school principals face compared to, um, you know, other uh, education sectors? I mean, there's a lot of challenges that are very similar, you know, um, I don't see too much of a difference between, aside from the religious aspect, but in terms of the students themselves, um, it's, it's very similar. I know budgetary is one of the areas where I, I feel there's that's the biggest difference that I've seen so far is the, um, the lack of funding, um, you know, for, for our Catholic schools. And so trying to be creative in terms of getting what you need for your school and making sure that your students have a similar experience um, to public school students so that when they, if they choose to go to a public high school, um, they've had the same um, similar uh, educational uh, background and rigor, or, although I know um, our schools typically do, high, you know, score higher on, on state testing and perform better. Uh, and I think that part of that at least for, for what I'm seeing is the small school environment, uh, which is not the case in public schools and, and having um, small numbers of students in classrooms, the higher teacher to student ratio, um, you know, all leads to higher success rates for, for students. Uh, teachers are really vested here. Uh, that is one thing I've also noticed is without, um, you know, teacher unions, really our, our teachers do so much and go so far above and beyond and they're not necessarily bound by contractual obligations that you know all teachers have to kind of follow the the letter of the contract where our teachers really can follow their heart and and do things that maybe necessarily you know other teachers might say oh if you're working for a union contract and you're staying all kinds of late hours and doing things like coaching basketball or coaching cheerleading and not getting a stipend for it, you're kind of going against the contract where our teachers just seem to really all be in it for the kids and just really doing what they do to make good memory, lasting memories for, you know, for kids and, and offering them the things that maybe they experienced in their um, childhood educational experience and wanting to provide that, you know, we, we have a Valentine's dance coming up. And so the teachers just work really hard to make sure that that's like a memorable experience, and even though it's a small school, um, you know, they're out there decorating and buying food and, you know, preparing. And so I really see that that sense of real community is is what I'm really um, enjoying about being here. Everyone really feels um, like a family. We're very small. So uh, that lends to it. But that is the one thing I, I see that is much different than public schools is really having a feeling of we're all in this together. We're all going to help each other. If you have a problem, we're going to make it work. Um, we're talking about substitutes and trying to get subs and our teachers are so good about, you know, giving up their prep period or um, pulling kids into their class just to, to make it work because they just really care about their colleagues and about um, their, um, their students. And so we don't often see, that aspect in in public schools. Congratulations, and on that community sense, I saw yesterday or or sometime this week, uh, you had a great donation for the the uniforms uh, for the basketball team. I think it was um, yeah. from the community, which is just so awesome. I mean, that, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that pride for the kids and and for the coach who's a volunteer and and all of, and that sense of a of a need that would otherwise in in other realms right just be a part of the budget or something of that nature right and and this creates even more of a uh, of a sense of pride for the kids and ownership you know over the team so yeah i definitely want to give a little shout out to the knights of columbus of atlantic yeah. city um they really uh they came and did their free throw contest that apparently they do every year and yeah. we had said any profits that we made from the sale of food or whatever we were using for uniforms and they um you know, afterwards i guess they realized <laughs> They didn't really collect that much money in terms of donations because it wasn't, you know, we don't have that many families that are, are in attendance. And so they called the, like a week later and just said, hey, how much do you think the uniforms are going to be? We'd like to we'd like to get them for you. So um, and then we had anonymous donor for the cheerleading uniforms. 
and um and so we're we're fully we're fully set <laughs> yeah that's just that that's just i think happy. that's a great example <laughs> yeah that's such a great example of community for you too i mean to to me that's just that's a great example of like you said, it's not just the teachers who are wonderful and giving every aspect, but the community can come together too, but you don't see that in, in a lot of other places, you know, which is, which is great. Um, I, for, for Elizabeth, I know you're also in sort of a different setup, uh, being a part of the, the Catholic partnership schools and being, you know, in, in probably a somewhat similar uh, boat as Ramona is, but, and you mentioned sort of your social justice background. So can you talk to us a little bit about that setup, you know, what it's like to be in your area, the things that you see as a principal and, and what, what your experience has brought to that position, especially now in a sort of a, a leadership position, right? Well, I think you, there you go. Sorry. Yes. Low bandwidth. Um, yeah. Um, uh... Absolutely. I think it has been a shift from my own personal experience within Catholic schools into a more urban setting where the majority of the students aren't Catholic. However, the the teachers, the staff, the community, the students, they all have this, um, you know, Christian and Catholic ideal of working together and um, with Father Michael Doyle, like doing our bit. Right. And that's a constant reminder within our own community in the waterfront south section of Camden. How can we, um, you know, um, utilize the resources that we have around us? How can we work together to help these young ones grow? And similar to Ramona, we have really small classroom sizes and a lot of families value that. Um, as a safe place to put their children where they will get individualized attention. Um, at Sacred Heart, we have a Montessori pre-K kindergarten program that is a um, program that families might not receive in other schools. Uh, so really, we're just trying to utilize our community right within the Catholic Partnership, our various donors to help the youth of Camden. Yeah, that's that's great. And and again, for those who aren't aware, the, the Catholic Partnership Schools sort of network is a group of Mary Nella, correct me if I'm wrong, five schools. Five. Well, yeah, four, that are four in a pre-K uh four in a pre-K that are in the Camden, Pennsylvania area that sort of are able to pull certain resources together in terms of funding and things of that nature to help the the, the students in that in those areas, which is right. which is fantastic. And you know, the with the partnership, it gives students the ability to do programs that they wouldn't be able to do outside, right? So right. I have various students who are in instrumentals, um, where I have uh, fourth graders playing the cello, right? And um, you know, cheerleading basketball track and field, just bringing students out of Camden or out of their communities into, um, you know, a program that helps facilitate and help them grow in whatever interests they may have. Yeah, they do an amazing job. So it, it's kind of like, you know, as, as, as I think about your different roles as principals, you know, and, and uh, the many hats that you have to wear, uh, one of them, it's also like being the spiritual leader of the school and what that means for uh, a principal coming in uh, into that leadership position. So um, I was going to ask you, like, in which ways do you feel like you are collaborating with like your local parish to make sure that you enhance the spiritual life of your students um, in, in our Catholic schools? Because Catholic identity is a huge part of who we are as Catholic schools and definitely a big part of who we are as Catholic school leaders. So why don't we start with uh, Sister Santa? I'm the lucky one today. Yes. Um, our, because we are a regional school, most of our students are not part of the parish that we're in. And so we try to include the parish in a lot of what we do in school. And especially with senior citizens, and um, they just love seeing the kids. So... For us, um, we, we, you know, we instill in them, they go to mass every week as if as a school community, we go on a Friday. Um, there's the daily rosary that many of our classrooms do. Um, our outreach programs, 
Our students are one of the most generous I've ever come across. They do project after project after project. Like we just finished one where they um, painted a book arc and filled it with books that is going into a section of Camden County that where the students would not have the opportunity to have books to read. But they didn't only think of the children, they thought of adults. So we also have a section of it on where the adults can also go get pick free books. Oh, they're constantly raising money for various organizations. And I just did something to lose everybody. No, you're still here. You still okay. Here. <laughs> um, we're trying to let we're trying to teach them that they need to look beyond themselves. Right. There's another world that needs help. They're a little bit more privileged. And and they do it. Our kids are are great. Our parents are great. You know, whatever we need, the parents are right there. That's so amazing. It is amazing. It, it, it's a plus for our small school because we're small also. Yeah. I mean, and a big piece of our Catholic faith is, you know, social service and social justice. And I think, you know, our schools really try to to do that for uh, for the world and our communities. So great job on uh, those, like, you know, book uh collection ideas they had a wonderful time painting it yeah it sounds mm -hmm. like it mm -hmm. what about any of you uh ramona or uh liz who may want to jump in here oh well, absolutely i was just talking to the ladies earlier i was running it in from church because today the michael doyle house had a celebration of joy and sound so um they brought in two rowan opera singers who did um, mm. spirituals for African American, um, like from from plays and musicals, and uh, just bringing the youth to see that and to see themselves, right, a represent a representative from their own community, uh, was fantastic. So, bringing students into church more, having more of a presence there. Every month, our students uh, coordinate their own prayer services based on grades. So for example, next week on the 23rd, fifth grade and eighth grades leading the Black History Month prayer service, right? So it's them taking ownership over um, their spirituality. Father Guest and I have really emphasized the increase and of a monthly mass within the community. So students are going over to Sacred Heart for mass. Um, and just this week I had five students, five families, who were interested in getting baptized, right? So it's really evangelization at work through our presence and through creating that relationship with the families. So That's beautiful. What about yeah. Atlantic City? What's happening there? <laughs> so we formed a really nice partnership with the Francister Franciscan Sisters of the Renewal. Um, and our, our, you know, they're in our school quite a lot. Uh, we love having them being part of our school and helping us with our monthly masses um, and what we do. So once a month we have our, our school mass and that is an early dismissal day. So then after the mass, um, our teachers are meeting with the sisters. Uh, we have lunch, we break bread together and we um, that's where we're focusing on our, on our teacher formation. Uh, which is really going very nicely. The sisters um, are watching the same words on fire videos that uh, that our teachers are watching. And then we're using that as our monthly uh, way to kind of digest and talk about um, the videos. And um, it really, I think, has helped teachers with just being able to carve out that time, that once a month time to really sit and discuss um, our faith, which is hard to do when you're teaching and, you know, you're running around and you have your own families and, uh, you know, a lot of our teachers work two jobs. And so it really just ca carves out that that moment. And then we do a teacher uh, in service on the other half, uh, you know, after the sisters leave, then we dive into the more educational um, aspects of professional development. So that's been working really nicely. Um, we did uh, for Lent, we just started. Um, you know, our school, as well as probably Liz's, we, we don't, we try not to um, fundraise with our own students because, you know, we want them to be the benefits of, of the funds, but not to actually do the fundraising. Uh, and so 
uh, an idea that that we were doing this year for Lent is I was trying to find a way to start to get some more healthy eating um, happening in the school. And so uh, I noticed that they've been really using a lot of their money that they bring in that they're supposed to be buying lunch, buying snacks and not really eating lunch. Right. So eating bags of chips and whatever else um, there is. So during Lent, we started and, you know, I'm hoping to continue this further than Lent, but they're just allowed to buy one snack item that is considered a junk food, you know, like chips or ice cream. Um, and so during Lent, we encourage them. Uh, we ha- we're having a competition uh, on their table, on their lunch tables, where they're going to be donating their snack money if they choose to, um, to go into the rice bowls. Uh, wow. And so That's really th- that, nice. yeah, yeah, that is just our way of saying, this is your sacrifice that you're making. Uh, during Lent, you're giving up that snack that you would have enjoyed and you would have loved loved to have eaten, but you're using that money instead, um, you know, to help families that that are in need around the world. Uh, And so they they were a little shocked yesterday when our our PE teacher went downstairs and was enforcing the one snack rule. They were like, oh, this really is happening. (laughs) My goodness. Mike and I just had like you know the experience of being with bishop uh sullivan yesterday uh and we had the blessing of the rice bowls um uh you know during uh mass at the cathedral and earlier in the morning at saint margaret's uh school and you know it was kind of like the idea of uh you know really serving people around the world with the work that crs is doing and uh what a great way to integrate um you know, that initiative and actually make it happen, um, you know, for the schools. So I'm grateful to hear to hear that story um, because we have to teach our children to, to um, give. And we believe that anybody has something, uh, everybody has something to gift, uh, you know, no matter, you know, how economically disadvantaged you might be, no matter where you are in life. There's uh, always something to give, even if that means just kind of like be, being able to smile to someone that's having a bad day. You're giving them something. So uh, taking it into that perspective. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think you may have also not sorry to interrupt you, Mary, now, but I also think you may have found a very good diet craze that could really sweep the nation. It's just mm. the one snack like. I think it would work for me. I don't know. That creates an incentive. Yeah. We're, you know? we're, we're trying. We're, we're yeah. also, you know, we're, we're looking to get on the um, free and reduced lunch for next year. Yeah. So um, this will, it's kind of easing our way in, um, in looking at what are we serving? What, you know, what does our meals look, right. what do our meals look like? And trying to reduce the the junk food that our kids eat so well and it helps with education which is great and i it's it's interesting i the mary Nell mentioned that i was at saint margaret's for one of bishop's um biz, visits and and dr uh mike uh sims who's in our office um ha, is sort of running the rice bowl program through his his ministry work here at the diocese and he showed the kids this idea where he shared um passed around some rocks that had little messages on them and he had a container and he said, well, the container's empty right now, but imagine if every child, you know, put their little bit into it, what it'll look like, you know? And so he walked around and suddenly it's full, you know? So the kids understanding the impact of what they were able to give up, you know, today and what that's going to give, even that small bit collectively is going to make a huge impact. And that's great for the kids to understand, and like you said, in a larger community of the world. Um, so so that's a, it's a wonderful idea. So congrats Mike, on that. That's good. Mike, and you mentioned, um, you know, the word impact, which I feel is a big word um, for principals in, you know, in our schools. Like one of, uh, I think our principals, definitely have um, great impact in the life of our families and our students and the experiences that they have and the understanding of Catholic education. I was going to ask you, um, you know, maybe all of you can chime in on this and say, what's something that uh, being a new principal, you felt like it's being um, something that has impacted the life of your families as you are the one 
making decisions for the school right now? Is there an initiative or something that you have done so far that you feel like, oh my goodness, this is uh, a blessing that I was able to get started on that or do this for, for my families? Um, what has been, you know, sort of like that thing? If you could think of your life as a principal right now since you came in on board. Well, for me, it's the day-to-day -day interactions with students. Um, you know, coming from a middle school background, you have these close relationships with, you know, preteens, but being an elementary school principal, right? You have daily interactions with, you know, three-year-olds, four-year-olds who come up and they are, you know, there's no filter. Um, and the amount of love that you get is really just inspiring, right? And it makes me want to do more. Uh, every day I see a kindergartner who says, Mrs. Mariani, I love you, which I wouldn't normally get from a seventh or eighth grader. Um, <laughs> but really having that day-to-day -day interactions is just what inspires me to do more, right? And so uh, talking to father guests, coming up with, um, trips that we could take students on to get them exposed to the world um, outside of the walls of our, our classrooms is something that I'm really trying to focus on this year um, and trying to increase for the spring. So trying to find the funding for field trips. Um, and luckily, the partnership has a bus. So that's something that I don't have to worry about per se, but really just trying to increase uh, the love of arts, science for our, our community. Um, I really think you know, having students get more exposure to faith and having our staff exposed to faith has created, um, you know, this growth over the course of the year that I've, I've heard from families, I've heard from staff. Um, that makes me very proud. Great job. Great job. There. Yeah, I love it. I think Ramona is ready to jump in. <laughs> Uh, well, I think that the, I think that what our families appreciate um, having such a large Latino population is having uh, someone in the building that speaks Spanish. I think that that has been um, something that I feel really good about being here and um, being able to communicate with families in their native language, um, assisting when they need help filling out something. Um, all of the communications now go out in Spanish and English. So um, I think that that helps with families being able to become more involved because they're more aware of um, what is happening in the school because of the communication being um, in their native language. And um, just and also what I love is I have so many students because usually when I walk into classrooms, I speak in Spanish and in English. And uh, I love that the the, some of the students are now responding to me in Spanish that are not, you know, they don't, they're learning a little bit of Spanish as the, the year goes on, um, especially in the first grade room. They're really eager. The, the students that don't speak Spanish are really eager to respond in Spanish. And so I love that they're open to that and learning. And, and I'm hoping that eventually we'll be able to get a Spanish class going. Uh, we don't have that presently, but that's um, something that I'd like to be able to have moving forward is um, a Spanish class. That's amazing. Definitely a great asset for Atlantic City. Sister Santa, how about you? What's uh, something that's been impactful for you? Um, there's a couple of things that have really changed me during the year so far. Uh, and I think it's the openness of the children, uh, their acceptance. And I think you're always followed by your opposites, as they say. And um, I was apprehensive at the beginning of the year, and so were they. And right now, I'm starting to see that they realize that, you know, I'm here for them. And anything I do is for them. So now I'm getting the smiles out of the older students. You know, um, you know how junior high, you know, the middle school, they're tough cookies. But um <laughs> You know, and, and they're starting to see that the little people will come up and give you a hug. So now I'm getting smiles in the morning when they come in and I get a good morning out of them. Um, and their parents are not looking at me like, oh, what's she going to do that's going to be different? You know, I'm not here to do something that's different. I'm here to bring out the best in them, to keep their academic standards up, to share my faith with them. So I, 
that has been impactful for me because as Liz knows, I'm used to going into my classroom in the morning, closing the door and doing my thing and not have to worry about all the other teachers in the building. Should mm-hmm. we tell them, Liz? I mean, I taught her how many years ago. <laughs> Why <laughs> not? <laughs> well, yeah, you should tell the story. Please, go oh, ahead. There, there is none. Liz was just a wonderful, wonderful little girl who always had her face in a book and oh, just loved to you. read. <laughs> and um, her mom and dad were sweet. And to, to see someone that you taught, really taught for a whole year in the position that she's in right now, that to me is is a gift. Thank you, sister. Hopefully I did something to to get her into Catholic education. It's it's easy Absolutely. To Liz, why don't you kind of like give people the the whole context? <laughs> oh my goodness. Well I just I start off with saying, you know, I went into our first uh diocesan principals meeting, nervous, you know, trying Absolutely. to find out find a familiar face. And then I don't see a sister but I hear her <laughs> and I hear her sister say something in the beginning and my head whipped around to take a look because, you know, as I tell everyone, sister was my second grade teacher at Holy Innocence in, Phil- in Philadelphia. Yep. Um, and wow. so, you know, I think my experience right within Catholic education has really shaped um, my, my leadership style, my mentality and the course of my life, right. Going into, um, the St. Joe's ACE program, um, and really focusing on social justice. And what I'm trying to do is utilize the things that I had, um, as a young Catholic elementary student, right. Into our own communities here. So, uh, one thing that we're doing, and I'm sure sister you would appreciate is that we do pretzel Thursdays. Right. So every Thursday is a fundraiser with a parent organization to raise money where we get Philly pretzels. Right. And, um, you know, it's just like a little piece of home when you think about it. That's amazing. Mike, can you imagine that? Like you just kind of like go to your onboarding meeting with the diocese and uh, you're kind of like nervous and getting ready to like meet everybody and the first thing you see is your second grade teacher sitting next to you at the same meeting for the same reason because she's also becoming a new principal i i I cannot beat that story but i will share something similar and it speaks to i think teachers leadership um, at our schools one of my first events when i was hired here was uh, a mass of the holy spirit at camden catholic high school which i attended unfortunately i i moved in the middle of my time there so i didn't officially graduate from there but i do consider myself a, a somewhat of a catholic camden catholic alum but i'm standing there we're all wearing masks uh because it was still in the covid uh, protocol time and walk walks by this six foot two guy and uh, with a mask on and I look right at the, I look at him and, and I go over to the, uh, the director of marketing there at Camden Catholic. And I said, I'm sorry, is that Mr. Crawford, the algebra teacher? And she says, Oh yeah. I said, Oh my God, I had him he- when I was yeah. here and he's still here. And she says, yeah, in fact, at the time he was celebrating 40 years of Catholic wow. education at, at Camden Catholic. And I just, it it was inspiring. I mean, that's just to, to make that his life. And he's more accolades than just being the algebra teacher of Mike Bress, please. Um, you know, he, he was a, an amazing basketball coach for decades here in South Jersey, but just he, he had an impact on me when I was there and it was that same feeling. I sort of whipped my head around and was like, I'm sorry. Is that who I think it is? You know? Yeah. And, and it was, and it's, it's, it's amazing. I mean, there's so many stories like that. We all have stories, in, right? Yeah. <laughs> leadership I, roles. I think it it's to the selflessness of Catholic yes. educators. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, he could have gone anywhere, you know, I, I'm sure in his time he could have gone anywhere, um, but he chose Camden Catholic and, his son is teaching. I think maybe both of his sons, in fact, are teaching there now. One's the basketball coach, um, you know, now. And, and and like, can you imagine you imagine one thing that your teacher, you know, your former teacher is now a colleague. Imagine that your father is your colleague now, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. at the same school that you graduated from. I mean, it's an incredible, incredible story, but it speaks to that. It speaks that to that impact, devotion. You know, yeah. The, the impact that we talk about, you know, I um 
in, uh, I had a principal who was a sister of mercy uh, in the Dominican Republic, and I went to a Catholic uh, school. And, you know, she was my principal, and uh, we recently reconnected through Facebook. And she had been looking at all the work I've been doing with the uh, Catholic Church and, um, you know, the Office of Catholic Education. And she just kind of like sent me this sweet, sweet message about how proud she was that I was in this role. And, uh, you know, part of it was her impact on me and um, what Catholic education did for me and how much I believe in it. So it, it is uh, kind of like amazing to see how those stories actually um, have impacted our lives and make us who we are today as leaders in Catholic education. Um, so, you know, we, uh, we also want to talk about, um, you know, what is the most difficult challenge, uh, you know, that you find as a principal in a Catholic school, uh, because, you know, this podcast may go to the ears of somebody who may be thinking about Catholic education and leadership and um, we would love to kind of like, you know, be transparent about what are those things that, you know, challenge you and how you overcome them. Well, similar to Ramona, I think for me, one of the biggest challenges is funding, right? Um, I was just in a non-public funding meeting and I just kept thinking that, oh, I need a class set of Chromebooks, right? Mm. And the funding is just not there. And, and the resources that we had from you know, COVID um, or at the beginning, right? They're being outdated because technology changes so immediately. Um, so for, for me, the hardest part is finding funding for uh, resources that would help our children immensely. Yeah. Okay. Anybody mm -hmm. else? And, well, I would just add to that. We're, we're kind of at the mercy of the public school system with regard to uh, the Title I funding, which, you know, we I do have some significant funds there, which you now I really want to tap into. And we were just talking prior to, um, you know, coming on to the podcast about the difficulty and the, the hoops that you have to jump through um, to get the money and to get the purchases approved. Um, we've been waiting for so long to get a fence on our, um, around our playground area, which is holding back our, um, you know, we have equipment that we want to put up. We have a garden that we want to put in place. Um, and so we really need the fencing and, and getting the quotes and waiting for them. And just that to me has been a challenge. I'm used to, you know, working within a system where you submit what you need to submit, you send it through, you know, there's going to be a board meeting, you know, when you're going to get it, when this you're waiting for secretaries and people, administrative assistants in the, the school district that you don't, you're not in the same building with, you don't have the same relationship with to kind of walk over to the office and say, Hey, where's this PO number? You know, where, where, where is it? Why is it taking so yeah. long? So that's been a little bit um, frustrating knowing that there is some money, there are pockets of money, um, but just being able to um, get those things uh, through. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are look, um, just kind of like uh, losing uh, Elizabeth Mariana, who has a uh, principal meeting now uh, at her school. So she is uh, leaving us. Thank you so much for being part of our podcast today. Oh, thank you for having me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Have a great day. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so, sister, how about yeah, sister? How about you in terms of the challenges? You know, um, what what are what's something that you're you're facing that you weren't you didn't maybe know you might be facing when you got here? Other than the marketing guy trying to make you get a new website, <laughs> who has been very good to me in getting that. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that's hitting me right now are parents who want to come to our school who want Catholic education, who are Catholic school graduates themselves, and they just can't afford it. And I think being it, to hear that a parent say, sister, we can't come back next year because I lost my job and we just can't afford it. That bothers me because I'm from a generation where we didn't have tuition. Mm -hmm. All we had was a, a minimal book bill. The door was open to everyone. Yeah. And I, it's not that way. And I'm fine. And they're good kids. You know, they're, that's what's breaking my heart right now. Having to say to parents, well, look, why don't you register and we'll see what we can do to get you money. We're trying, 
you know, yes. I've mapped out my friends to try and get funding for these students whose parents want to be here, don't want them in public school. It's like the parents who have children who have special needs academically and we can't meet their needs and they're forced to put them in the public school system. That's yeah. another thing that bothers me. We, funding, I, you know, I think sister, you're um, kind of like uh, totally right in the sense that, you know, our dream as Catholic school leaders would be to welcome everybody and not have to worry but, about the tuition fees because mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, definitely a challenge for some of our families. Uh, even though every year our schools raise, uh, you know, money to try to kind of like uh, make up the difference in terms of uh, providing tuition assistance. There's um, a huge amount of commitment from, uh, you know, the diocese and also our particular schools on providing what our families need, but we don't have enough to provide to everybody. And I think, you know, this conversation leads to, uh, you know, what can we do as uh, Catholic, Catholic people and, uh, you know, in the community to make sure that our schools uh, continue to be able to provide the, the amazing uh, Catholic education experience for our families. And I think, you know, if you think about it, like school choice is a big movement now in the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. And I think that our families uh, and uh, people that support Catholic education uh, need to, uh, you know, get on that wagon of supporting like school choice for uh, New Jersey and ways in which we want to do that. So um, that's something very important uh, for us to kind of like move the needle that way. And it's been impossible for New Jersey for the past years because, you know, um, there's a strong teacher, a public school teacher union, but I think uh, there's hope and, and there's opportunity there to kind of like expand on the school choice for New Jersey so that um, more uh, Catholic school uh, families and families that are not part of the system yet that would like to become part of it could actually afford it and, and, and be part of our schools. I need to find a rich billionaire. <laughs> I've got some friends. I'll take care of it. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I think it, it's a, it, it's something, as you said, you've had, had you didn't have to deal with, right. you know, earlier in your experience. Um, but, but now as a reality that as a leader, you sort of have to, to face, you know, mm -hmm. as, as sort of the leader of the school, which is a, you know, a sort of a curveball, probably a little bit. I, I also kind of may, maybe it's it's something fun or or it's something even even more serious. But it just in that transition from being a classroom teacher to a principal, what what's something else that that was surprising to you or like, you know, was it's something you you've grown from in this first year as a leader? You know, like you said, it, prior, you could shut the door and you focused on your classroom. Opinion. You know, and so like to me, OK, now the door's open. Right. And, and mm -hmm. now you're dealing with all the classrooms. So is there something that just, you know, I, I, however you want to whatever direction you want to take, I'll, I'll let you kind of take the. Um, but, you know, where where do you what what's something from that that growth that you see the difference on? Oh, there's so much different when you're a principal. There is just so much that you're involved in. You get more involved into the family's lives and mm, what's going okay. on and their needs. Where before, if you had a child in your room that had a dirty uniform, well, you would take it. You only had one. But if you have 15 or 20 or you have families that are in dire need, um, it's not just one. You're not contained. It makes you look beyond yourself into what you can do. Uh, to help these families overcome or deal with what they're going through. You know, you might yeah. have one kid that's getting a divorce in, in the family. Now you've got the, you've got the school. So you might have right. five or six that you weren't privy to that information when you're in your own classroom. You're responsible for the academic growth of each child now, or before you were only, if you had 20, 25, 30 kids, they were your problems. They were the one. Now you got to worry about everybody. Got to look at all the report cards. You have to look at all the failures. <laughs> got to look at all the test scores for the whole bunch before you were pigeonholed into your own classroom. Yeah. You know, and, and for me, that's something that I have to get used to doing. Mm -hmm. Flex a different second, muscle, I guess, second right? Second years yeah. are going to be better than first, I keep on saying. <laughs> the sophomore <laughs> season will be more improved. <laughs> what about I'll me? know what to expect. Yeah. You know? 
but there's just so much. Um, and it's all for the kids. It's all for their growth, their development. Well, now you get to impact not 20, but maybe, you know, 150, you know. Mm. <laughs> what, what for you, Ramona? What's uh, What's been for you? Well, I'm really enjoying um, the professional development aspect. I really enjoy um, doing the professional development with with staff and seeing uh, yesterday we we talked about trauma informed practices and um, you know a lot of our teachers had never you know really heard the term before uh, and so bringing that information um, talking about it having them identify students we're we're getting an INRS team we 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 have an INRS team we haven't had a meeting yet but we are uh, working on. Uh, identifying students that need additional supports and helping them provide, you know, providing interventions so that we can work hand in hand with the child study team in Atlantic City. Um, that's, a, you know, a challenge, but but something that we're embracing and really um, want to get staff and uh, families aware of, uh, you know, what those processes look like. And, um, you know, we have a number of students that do receive services. Um, but, you know, hoping to get a guidance counselor, that's a, a focus for next year. Uh, we don't have a guidance counselor. And so that is something that I think after our meeting yesterday, we talked about that being a really high um, priority and um, working with Atlantic City to figure out how we can possibly build um, the need for that into the IEPs so that we can get some funding for that for next year. Um, so that's that's one of the challenges. One of the things that I see... Uh, probably one of the biggest staffing needs that I see is, is having a guidance counselor. We all know that children's um, trauma, family trauma is increasing, uh, you know, by leaps and bounds across the United States. And so um, being able to meet that need is, is something I, I think is a really big priority. That's fantastic. Um, I mean, I see like you both are kind of like working on great uh, initiatives, uh, great uh, thinking for the benefit of our families and, and our students and our teachers, kind of like developing that uh, professional, uh, you know, background there. I um, want to ask you, for those who are listening, who may be interested in the leadership position of being a principal in a Catholic school, what would be your advice uh, as we are ending this podcast? Short I would say I would say it is really a, a great little gem. I mean, if you're a, a well, first of all, if you're an educator in public education and you are retired, it's the best gig you could come across. <laughs> yeah. um, it really it really is because you um, you know, one thing that was a little scary getting started was, oh, I can make all the decisions without like. There's not all these layers of red tape that oh, yeah. I need to go yeah. through. You know, it, you're pretty much running the ship. You know, um, of course, you have a father and we have, you know, the superintendent. But in general, you know, you can kind of make those decisions and and kind of run the ship the way that you want it. And so and they're usually I mean, our school is just a small school. So it's the best gig around. I, I'm really, really enjoying it. I, I highly recommend any retired um, supervisors or principals or even teachers who really have, uh, you know, a, a strong background in education to consider it. Amazing. What about you, Sister Santa? I think I would tell uh, anyone that's interested in going into administration, get a couple of years in the classroom under your belt first. Try to broaden your expectations for the students, even change grades a couple of times so that you know the inner workings of the grade levels and, you know, go for it. I think it's great, you know, that and do it. I hate to say this, but do it when you're a little younger um, so that you have the stamina and the vitality and um, when you're young. You know how they yeah. say when you're young, have your children? Well, it's the same way, you know, <laughs> but I do think they need some experience and then go for it. That's amazing. Great advice, uh, kind of like two different takes. But, uh, you know, I think we we have schools uh, for um, all kinds of uh, leaders that actually want to take the challenge and uh, do the best for our families and our kids. 
think, you know, God uh, knows uh, what you need and when you need it. And if he's calling you to that, please do not hesitate to consider if any openings uh, mm -hmm. you know, are happening in, in the diocese around you. So uh, I think we have come to the end of our podcast, Mike. Uh, what a great conversation, right? I, I really enjoyed it. I want to thank all three of our guests. I know we took you guys at a time that probably <laughs> a thousand things are going on set on outside of the door right now that you may have to be facing. So thank you for taking this time with us. Um, we, we really appreciate it. It was, it was fun and, and, and informative as always. And thank you, Marianella, as always for, you know, man, you know, directing the ship here and, and, and asking wonderful questions. And I'm, I'm sure our listeners are going to really enjoy this conversation. We wish you guys the best of luck on the rest of the year. Uh, we know we'll see you guys you. in person soon, but uh, continued uh, success this year. And thanks so much for being on. Yes. Thank you. And I just Thank want you. to make a plug. Please remember that if you're looking for a Catholic school for your children now, uh, go to our web our website, South Jersey Catholic Schools.org, and you'll find all the information there about the schools available for South Jersey.